Well, we're about a month into 2024 and you probably know what that means. Today, we're going to be talking about all of the best modifications that you should probably be running for World of Warships. So without any further ado, let's start taking a look at some of these. Now, disclaimers, alert, just whilst I'm getting into this, we are going to be talking about mods here from Aslan's mod pack. I'm not going to be talking about the World of Warships mod station, however, 90 to 99% of the mods that you will find here spoken about in this video, you will be able to find in mod station. Both mod packs are completely safe and viable to use, so have no issues, no qualms about anything here, about anything being wrong, legal, any of that kind of description, okay? So, let's get straight into this one. First things first, what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead here to the website as Lane's mod pack, you can find the link below in the description. You're going to go ahead and you're going to click on the button here that says main download link and that will take you and download the link as you can see here in the top right hand corner and that's going to download the mod pack for you. You're going to download that. There will be a menu that pops up once it's downloaded and you open the program. It is going to just let you know, hey, sorry, this program isn't recognized properly by Windows Defender. Don't worry. This is fine. It's safe. Okay, just go ahead, click it, run anyways, and you're going to continue going through those menus. When you do go ahead um, and open that up, you're gonna see a couple of things appear here. Firstly, you're gonna to wanna to choose your installation language for probably if you're watching this video, it's probably gonna be English, but there is a multitude of different options instead. You're gonna hit okay. Once you get through this next screen, you're going to come to the next menu here. It's gonna just quickly initialize, check for the updates. You're gonna see here, it's gonna ask you to show preview window. You're gonna check this button. Reason being, you're going to be wanting to see exactly what it is that you're installing and this gives you a short little preview, so which is a fantastic thing to be having. So once you've done that, go ahead and click next. Uh, it's going to show you like a brief little readme description page here, click next. Next again after the changelog. Now this one is important here, you're going to want to make sure that you are selecting the correct installation location for all the warships. So as you can see here on my client, I've got it in my E drive and the application is World of Warships. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got the correct folder installed. I have not checked via the Steam client, I will uh, confess, because I play via the Wargaming client. This should w still work normally, as long as you're selecting the correct installation folder. Make sure it is just World of Warships. If you're, say, playing on the World of Warships public test, don't select that version, because that will install the mods for the public test version and not your normal client. If you do one on the public test, go ahead and do that. But make sure it's the correct folder. Once you've done that, hit next. And we're going to get straight here into each of the mods. The first mod that we're going to be talking about here today is going to be the Team HP Plus. This one is a fantastic mod that is plenty customizable as you can see here on screen. And what it allows you to do is quickly see both the total HP of your team and the total HP of the enemy team. This one I find very useful for allowing you to make those slightly smarter moves about how aggressive you may want to be playing or how passively you might need to be uh, retreating for example given the hit points in the battle. So for example, if the enemy team has got a lot more HP than your team, you might want to be backing off a little bit. Fantastic one, I do highly recommend. The next one that I'm going to be suggesting to players is going to be the ship movement indicator. This one here is the version four, which has four different colors, green for when the ship is moving full ahead, yellow for when the ship is moving slow ahead, red when the ship is stationary, and purple when the ship is in reverse. This is quite useful for working out if an enemy ship is moving forwards, backwards, or how they might be dodging. And it's especially useful um, for ships that don't have access to such things such as torpedoes, which allow you to get a bit of an easy indication as that shows you with the torpedo tracker. Yes, you can look at the smoke stacks and work out which way the ship might be going, but it does take a couple seconds for the animation to update. Following this, another fantastic mod I recommend players to run is going to be Consumables Monitor. This allows you to see what your allies' consumables are, as well as seeing when they're active, when they're on cooldown, and if they are ready to go. Very useful for working out how to use them in team play. After that, we have got the Regen Monitor, which just shows you a little white bar of how much your allies are able to heal. Detect the spotted indicator, which allows you to see um, whether your allies are actually spotted or not, which is fantastic for working out if an enemy ship has popped their radar, for example. And then the following one after that is going to be the smoke marker, which shows you essentially like where enemy ships have deployed their smoke uh, and your friendlies on the minimap, which is a really, really nice one for you to be able to see clearly. If you've ever wanted to be able to dodge submarine torpedoes just a little bit easier, this one is the mod for you. 
Now, how does this work? When a submarine pings you, it has got two different states. You have got a homing torpedo, which is actively tracking your ship, and a torpedo, which isn't. This shows you the difference between a torpedo that is homing in your ship and one that isn't. So when it, as soon as that marker changes from being an active homing ping to when it isn't due to the fact that the torpedo is either run out of range, for example, or you use your damage control, you'll be able to know and hopefully be able to make best usage of when to maneuver against the torpedo to avoid it. Speaking of torpedoes, this next one I do quite like running and this is the torpedo detection indicator. Basically, it shows you as soon as either your torpedoes or even friendly torpedoes have been surface spotted by an enemy ship. Note, this does not take into account whether an enemy ship is using Hydra or not, because unfortunately that would be classified as cheating, but it will show you when the torpedo has been surface spotted by its normal detection range, so it gives you a rough idea as to when the enemy has seen a torpedo and when they're going to roughly start maneuvering to avoid it. Now this is the mod that I by far get the most requests for asking, what is it or how do I get this? This is the minimap by Battleframe and this is the one that shows you radar positions on the minimap and in the 3D space. So when you're holding down the alt key here, you can see the radar ranges for ships that might be carrying radar. So of both friendlies and enemies. And if you do happen to approach into last spotted position of an enemy ship who might be carrying radar, and I say might because you know ships like say British light cruisers do have the option of carrying radar, but uh, the game won't exactly tell you if, it, if they are carrying radar or not. You've got to just be smart about it. It will show you when you're entering that range, which is a fantastic tool to have if you're not quite so paying attention um, to your surroundings. So very, very useful one. And I do recommend most people to be running this mod. If you managed to stick with the video so far, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate it. This segment here pretty much just exists to tell you apologize about any of the recording uh, quality going forward. I have been a bit unwell lately, so my voice has not been quite so good. So if you do notice a bit of a drop, I apologize in advance. Whilst we're here though, I'm just going to ask you to, if you do find this video to be incredibly useful, maybe consider giving me a like, maybe consider even subscribing as well if you want to see more content from me. And you know what? We might as well do a little bit of a challenge, shall we? This is a little bit of a weird one. I know, I apologize. But if you have been watching my uh, this video here, you would have seen my desktop wallpaper. It's this image here. If you can guess which character is my favorite out of it, I'll give you a, a cookie below in the comments. How does that sound? If you can do that, you get a cookie. Okay, let's go back to the content. Bye. The next one following this is the advanced attention marker, and this shows any pings on the me map in the 3D space. This one I really quite like, particularly for stuff like clan battles, because communicating with your allies effectively and seeing the exact positions people are pinging on the minimap in the 3D space can be very, very useful. Following on from this, we have got the submarine pingers on the minimap, and this shows you pretty much the exact position where the marker comes up that Wargaming has implemented on the minimap as well as in the 3D space, making it just that little bit easier to be dropping your depth charges on those unspotted submarines. Next one here is more of a quality of life mod, but this one just fixes the position of uh, aircraft squadrons on the minimap. So typically they'll be offset a bit to the right or the left, for example. I just like to have it exactly where they are. That's just a quality of life. Don't need to run this, but it irks me when I see it. This mod here is going to be the improved battle chat. And this one shows you not only the exact player ship that is talking, but also the entire player's player username as well, uh, as well as the message, obviously. This one I really quite like because it makes it just that touch easier to be able to work out who it exactly you are communicating with both on your friendly team or even the enemy team if you do happen to converse with them. The next one here is going to be the battle expert and that shows the angling of your ship compared to the enemy ship that you are targeting and vice versa. So this one is really quite useful if you're trying to work out hey if my AP shells are going to bounce or not which way they might be turning etc. It is quite a useful mod to be running and it does help if you're not quite sure of those different angles and what kind of thresholds uh, you might need. For example, Des Moines uh, improved pen angles might be wondering, oh, I don't know exactly when I might be able to start penetrating enemy ship with my AP. This one just makes it a little bit easier for you to do so. This next one here is going to be the build viewer and that shows you your current build of your ship that you're running in the current match. I like this because as a streamer, shout out twitch.tv forward slash 99 destroyer, um, when people ask me in chat, for example, hey, what mod, uh, what build are you running on this ship? I can easily click this button and it shows me uh, my full ship build for people to easily see. 
this one it's kind of a niche situation but if you do find yourself in a similar situation it might be something good for you to run this next one here is the module state viewer so as people may be aware throughout last year we discovered the fact that um you have randomized hp when spawning in with your torpedo tubes for example this one is quite useful to know how much hp each of your main batteries and your torpedo tubes have and roughly how long and how many hits they might be able to survive before they do unfortunately get knocked out. This one here is the 3D radar and when you hold down the alt key you can see the radar ranges of not only your friendly ships but the opposition in the physical 3D space. For enemy ships it has to be when they're spotted though. It is really quite useful and I do like having it because it gives you that visual indication of when you might be running into or out of someone's radar. This one here is the 3D uh, radio position finder in the 3D space and well, it does exactly as the mod describes. If you have the 3D, uh, the radio position finder or RPF skill, it shows it to you in the 3D space as well. Now, this is a newer mod that was added towards the end of last year. And basically it shows you how many players on the enemy team have got RPF trained on you at the current moment in time. This one's quite useful, particularly if you want to communicate in clan battles, how many people have got RPF on you. This is the one uh, to be running. The next one here is the advanced HP bar indicator and basically it just gives you a lot more customization options about uh, how you visualize and see the HP bar indicator on your screen. So if you want to customize it to be a bar, different thicknesses, etc, this is the mod to be running. This next one here is a bit different from what I've run in the past, but this is going to be the AFK monitor. Ever since Wargaming has gone ahead now and introduced their own uh, team panels in the game. I've been running AFK monitor and it's nice to know sometimes when hey either your friendly ships or your opposition is gone AFK and unfortunately that does happen but it's good to be at least aware of the situation around yourself so you can at least play accordingly to whatever is happening. This one here is better for those of you that do enjoy playing carriers and this is going to be the PT fighter assistant and that just shows you a bit more information about how long your fighters are operational for on the main screen here when they're active when they're on cooldown and how many you have left i do quite like having this one it just makes it a little bit easier for me to work out which squads have got fighters available and how long they've got left it does help you to coordinate a little bit more with your allies and particularly it's useful for when you're playing some of these newer uh, support cvs like the sx line that has just been added to the game this one here is just more for a little bit of fun for myself. I do like quite seeing when enemy planes start flying through my flak and I do like seeing big damage numbers done to them. This one just shows you how much HP is on the any squadron at any given moment. So it is nice for me to be able to see, hey, how much HP they've got before plane gets knocked down or even seeing big numbers when a carrier flies through my flak. This one should be pretty easy to tell. It just shows you uh, your current ping in the game and just makes it a little bit clearer for you to see. Do like it because sometimes you might be wondering what the hell is happening my controls aren't responding and it just gives you a little bit of an easier visualization for you to be able to see what on earth is going on with your connection now this one is by far one of the most crucial mods every player should 100 percent be running in their game client and i'm honestly shocked wargaming hasn't got this into their base game at the moment this is the score timer and what it shows is a timer on both your team and the enemy team to how long it takes for the game to end. So for example, top screen here, you can see the allied time team will win the match in about six minutes. The opposition will be winning the game in the second screenshot and you can see both teams are tied in the final version there. Very, very useful for working out how you should be playing, how many caps you might need to be looking to actually secure the win. Maybe you need to sink a few more enemy ships just to be able to secure that. Very, very crucial mod and you should 110% be running this in World of Warships. Another timer that I do love to be running is the shot timer and that shows you from the second you shot your last salvo how many seconds at a, until you go unspotted again. Now it is a 20 second countdown and if you're very skilled enough you can easily um, know what this duration is but I do prefer to be able to visually see the countdown ticking in the top corner of my screen underneath the detected indicator. It just makes it just a little bit easier for me to work out how to play around when I'm spotted and when I'm not. I do think players should be running this one as, I mean, just having a visual countdown for you is, just makes that life a little bit easier. Following on from that, the next timer we're talking about here is going to be the radar timer. Now this works for be both radar or hydro and essentially it counts upwards how long uh, you were spending within someone's radar or hydro duration. This can be quite useful to work out like which ship is popped radar, for example, on the enemy team. 
as you may know, different ships have different radar durations. So for example, a Gdansk has got about a 12 second radar compared to a Des Moines, which has like a 35, 40 second radar duration. Having this mod makes it so much easier to work out which ship has popped their radar. Because for example, if you're spending 30 seconds within a radar, you know it's a Des Moines radar. Whereas if you're only spending about 10 seconds within a radar, it's probably going to be a Gdansk radar. And it just makes it so much useful, uh, especially in team play for working out how you can play around enemy ships using their consumables. Now, this one's not quite so flash. This is just the your real world clock shown to you in battle. Nothing, nothing too fancy, but it does help you to quickly look at the game clock and be like, ah, it's 2 a.m. Ah, I better stop. Yikes. This one here is the battle timer, and this is just the countdown for how long uh, for the match duration. This one just allows you to move it around and customize it a little bit more to your liking. I, for example, do like to have it here in the center of my screen. You can customize it as you wish. This one here is going to be the numerical capture time for objectives, and it will show you exactly how long until the base gets captured, whether it be for a friendly base or for an enemy base. Can make it quite useful for working out how long you might have until you might need to reset an objective or until your allies capture it. Quite useful, I do enjoy running this one. Following on from that, we have got the travel time to capture. Now this one, you hold down your alt key to see this time. However, it's not 100% accurate because it'll only show you to the center of the capture circle, not quite the edge of it. So take into that into account, it will be a little bit shorter than what the mod displays, but can be useful for working out, hey, will you make it in time before the enemy team does this, for example. This next one here is actually a crosshair. Now, crosshairs I think are more of a personal taste, but if you're wanting to know probably what the best ones are, this is probably going to be it. This is the Nomogram Classic and Modern. I've actually personally moved away from using it. However, I do recognize its value and I do think players will actually find it really quite useful. So if you do struggle a little bit with gaming, give this uh, crosshair a bit of a shot. It will update the ranges and stuff accordingly. So I do think it's quite nice for that. But personally, I've played World, Ship, World of Warships for long enough now. I've played nearly 12,000 games. I don't need it. <laughs> I'm more than confident with my own shooting, uh, especially with leading now with the ships I play. So if you do struggle a little bit, definitely take this um, mod. If not, you can run any mod you want to when it comes to your aiming. This one here is fantastic. If you've ever wanted to take a look at a particular ship and you couldn't find it in the tech tree, yeah, Wargaming does tend to hide quite a lot of stuff from the tech tree. This here shows you all of the ships in the game. Uh, sorted out by their individual nations and obviously by the tiers. And it is so, so nice to be able to take, click on a ship, preview it, take a look at say its armor scheme, for example. And it's just fantastic to have. I really enjoy doing this because sometimes, hey, I do like to take a look at the visuals of some of these different ships. It does sometimes include some upcoming ships as well that have been added to the game files and made its live server. So for example, if you do download this one, an example that is currently available would be the main, the tier, what is it? The super ship following on from the Montana. That's not actually been added properly to the game client, but you can actually preview it, take a look at it. Uh, you can't see everything about the ship, unfortunately, but it does give you a bit of an idea. You can take a look at the armor scheme, work out, is this something you might be wanting to go towards? And I do enjoy having it. Sometimes though, it's nice to just look at pretty ships that you don't actually have yet in port, and this is a great way to be able to do so. This one here, very, very simple. It just shows you how many players are currently online on your server. So if you're playing on the EU server, for example, this will show you how many players are currently playing on the EU cluster. NA, it will show you how many is playing on the NA cluster and Asia server, it'll show you how many is playing on the Asia server. Quite nice, especially if you're playing towards, say, some of those off-peak hours, just working out, hey, would you be able to get some consistent games, especially uh, given the fact that uh, you might be playing in as I said, in an off-peak hour where there's less players available. We also have here resources for your port. This is great because it means stuff like your steel and your coal, for example. You know, Research Bureau points as well included, I almost forgot. It means you no longer need to go ahead to the armory and enter the specific tabs to be able to view all those resources. You can just see it here, top right hand corner of the screen, underneath your doubloons, your free experience, your credits. It's all there. You don't need to go anywhere. It's right there. You in your port. I love it, especially when I'm working towards, say I'm getting close towards, um, for example, an, my next steel ship or my next coal ship. I know what the price already is. I can then just visually see in the port and I can just keep working towards it myself without having to slowly go in and out of the armory because that can take a while to load. 
Continuing on with some of these port mods here, we have got the carousel fast uh, click button and essentially if you do have a lot of ships in your port and you're scrolling through, click the double arrow button here and it will take you right back to the very start or if you want to on the other side of your carousel to the very end of your ship list. Going on here, we also have the experience in, uh, to your next ship and plus it shows you a little 3D icon of your ship as well. If you are, the main reason I run this is if for example you're grinding towards your next ship for example, if I'm regrinding my Harugumo line, I want to be able to see how much experience I need on the current ship to be able to get uh, research the next ship available in the, in the line. This one shows it to you clear as day. You don't need to be entering into like any of the tech tree or working out how much experience you need. It just shows you right here on the ports uh, without having to go anywhere. Really quite nice if you want to have it uh, simple displayed like that for you. Though sometimes I do filter between running it and not running it just depending how I feel. This one here is uh, shows you maximum AP shell damage uh, per minute, maximum HE shell DPM, your overmatch, and it fixes the speed rounding error that can occur in the port. I do like it because for the main reason, because I don't need to be visiting any alternative websites or doing any funky maths to work out what my AP shell DPM is, what my HE DPM is, or what I can be overmatching with my current guns. It literally displays it to you in port here, and that can be really quite useful if you're trying to work out what the capabilities of your ship actually are. This one here is perfect for if you do happen to be a little bit lazy like me sometimes and you just want to be able to have your containers collected for you automatically. Click this button and provided the last container you opened was the same one you want to keep opening, as soon as you meet the experience requirement it'll collect it for you and it'll just store it for you. So for example if I want to keep collecting coal containers, before I install this mod I need to make sure I have gone ahead I have selected opening a coal container from the selected list. And as soon as I install this mod, anytime I meet the experience threshold daily, it will go ahead and automatically store a coal container for me and will sit there in my inventory, which is a fantastic little quality of life feature for me to have. The last two mods I'm going to quickly mention here are going to be the battle recordings and allowing to hear your sounds when the game is minimized. The second one should be pretty obvious as to what it does. You can still hear in-game sounds when, you, when your game is minimized slash your alt tabbed across to a different screen. So for example, I run two monitors. I tend to like switch between applications a lot. I do like to hear all the World of Warship sounds whilst I'm playing a game, whilst I'm quickly doing something on the other monitor. But the one here I'm talking about now is going to be the battle replays. I like to turn those on so you can go back and watch a game you've previously played. And for me, it's quite nice to be able to have it all separated into a version uh, replay folder. So for example, if I'm playing on the latest patch, I like to be able to go back to that uh, patch and see patch folder and see the replays from it. Really quite a nice one and that's just a little quality of life for someone who does tend to view a lot of replays like myself. Once you've done all that, you're going to go ahead and click the next button. Click this checkbox here, which is remove all previous mods, which is just to make sure everything's A-OK -okay safe and nothing gets corrupted. You're going to hit install button. You're going to hit next. It's going to go through. It's going to install all of these mods here. You can watch the progress as you want to. That's completely fine. It's going to go ahead. It'll do its thing, install it. And then once you get finished that, we'll come to a little checkbox screen at the end here. And it'll just ask you like a few options from Aslane and you can hit finish and then launch all the warships normally. While that's happening, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone so much for, if you managed to stick through and watch this entire video in one sitting. <laughs> I'm thank you. That is some dedication. I truly appreciate it. If you still stuck around at the end here, um, thank you so much once again. I want to just quickly say as well, recently I've actually hit the threshold uh, for YouTube to be able to um, receive super thanks. So if you've actually really found this video useful it would greatly appreciate it if you wouldn't mind uh giving a super thanks otherwise though the bare minimum i would ask you to do is give this video a like if you found it useful maybe even give me a subscription if you want to check out more content from me again in the future and well if you've ever wanted to know what the best super ships uh you should be picking up first are you're gonna want to click on this video here